All right, let's try and bust through this thing. I can at least get this one done, most likely, and then this one ain't gonna finish at this part. Maybe get close, but it ain't gonna get finished. Uh, I think I have my next list set up for the next, like, bunch of Let's Plays. Most I don't even need to ask. Oh, let's get going anyway. Inside scoop, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have a list, uh, ready to go at some point. I th like I said, it's gonna be very easy to make a list. In order to search for the Inaba Persona users, Mitsuru and I searched the school building for an exit out of the tower. But the interior of the building has been warped into a complex maze. I don't think we'll get out that easily. Um, I'm detecting a set of stairs just up ahead. Would you please try going down a floor? Got it. Let us know if anything else comes up. This maze is rather troublesome. We must hurry on. Mitsuru mutters to herself after she and Fuka end their conversation, and her voice sounds tenser than usual. It looks like something's on her mind, so I decide to talk to her. Are you still upset at how you and his friends got caught up in this? I am, but what truly bothers me is how I cannot get a full grasp on the Shomi Nazuki character, who has been behind everything. Are we sure he's a Persona user? When he fought against Labrys, he didn't use a Persona. In addition to that, the one who called himself the Persona behind Labrys' disappearance said that he had no Persona, the person behind. Granted, that could have been an act to confuse us, but it still seems like a very unclear way of doing things. It's hard to believe that what he'd said was just an act. When I spoke directly with Minazuki, I saw his persona myself. This matches with what Narukami and his friends attested. Could he have an accomplice? An accomplice? Hmm. Akihiko, this is only a hypothesis, but what if there were two Minazukis to begin with? Two? You mean the one who called himself Sho and the one who called himself Minazuki are two different people? No. His personalities changed before our very eyes. There's no doubt that they're the same body. But what if this isn't a case of multiple identity disorder? What if the two truly are completely separate personalities existing in the same body? Completely separate? What do you mean? Mitsuru-senpai! I'm detecting a shadow just up ahead of you! We immediately stop talking about the boy when Fuka's voice reaches us. There's only one door ahead of us, at the end of the hallway. I don't see a way around whatever's in our path. It'd be too much trouble to try to head back. Let's break through here, Mitsuru. It seems there's no other way. The situation is growing more and more dire by the moment. We must deal with this as quickly as possible. Alright, who are we fighting? Rush to the door and charge inside. On the other side is a normal classroom. Well, normal if you ignore the bizarre decorations all over, with a block, blackboard, la lectern, and rows of desks. The ace detective of Inaba is waiting for us here. It's been a while. You two seem, seem to have made it out of your predicament. How does it feel to have been rounded, rounded up like that? This Nauto is a fake. There's no reason to doubt it. But it's well made. It would be hard to tell the difference unless you had shadow detective abilities like Fuka. If the enemy's goal wasn't to carve off pieces of our personas in battle, these acrid doubles could easily have been used as weapons against us. Enough idle conversation. Let's get this over with. We don't have a lot of time. Wait, Akihiko. As I get impatient to go into battle, Mitsuru's voice stops me. Huh, true. I guess we should listen to the fake's dying words. We may be able to gain some clues after all. There's something I want you to tell me before I slay you. What, what is, is it? You, you can, can ask, ask, but it doesn't mean I'll answer. Who created you, fake people? Who is Minazuki? Huh. That's, That's an odd thing to ask. Didn't you meet him yourself only a few moments ago? You should ask him yourself. Then again, you won't be getting that chance and you'll never leave here. I'm gonna go with Mitsuru. Because, you know, why would I choose Akihiko? With Mitsuru's sword. Unless she controls differently here and isn't as good, I don't know. I just assume... Yeah, you just... With the rapier rape everyone or something. Eh. 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 Anyway, let's go. That's, I mean, it's kind of hard to think of things to say. Finally! Alright, let's just slash away at this thing. Her, that is. Wait, I, I was surprised to that, that myself, truthfully. I don't even know how I did that. Did I even get enough to do it? Oh, whatever. I should just accept what I did. 
Hey, you took that? That was weird. I know I have a good lead, actually. Go, you just shut up and stop breaking my conversation. Victory smiles upon us. Yeah, that, damn, it's Zuru. Why wouldn't I use her? If I wanted a challenge, but I don't really want a challenge. <laughs> that was enjoyable. Please sit back and enjoy the spectacle extinction. Well. Please don't describe what you see. Please don't describe what you see. Please don't describe what you see. Ah, <sighs> did you have to say that? Mitsuru Senpai, Akihiko Senpai, are you all right? Yeah, no problems on our end. The shadow disappeared before we could get any information out of it, though. We can't waste any time. Let's keep moving while we talk. Okay. Please head down those stairs then. That should get you out of the tower. Another battle. We follow focus directions and head for the exit. Along the way, I decide to pick up our discussion on Sho's true character. Mitsuru, back to what we were talking about earlier. It looked like Sho changed right in front of us. He switched personalities. What makes you think that it's not the ordinary form of split personality? Do you recall the conversation in the limo about Ikutsuki's personal experiments? I said there was an indication that a plume of dust was used. You mean the human experimentation we were talking about? That's definitely something a guy like Ikutsuki would have come up with. What if Ikutsuki's experiments on Minazuki involved transplanting a plume of dust into a living person? What? Why would he do something like that? Considering that it could have been part of Ergo Research's attempts to create artificial persona users, it makes sense. It's most likely that Ikutsuki implanted a plume of dust into Minazuki in order to intentionally try to force a persona to appear. But Sho Minazuki didn't awaken to the persona ability. That much can be gathered from the fact that Ikutsuki labeled the experiment a failure. That bastard performed terrible experiments on young children, all for his own gain. And he called this a failure? Ikutsuki put something strange inside a living person and simply wrote off what he did as a failure. That only proves how insane he'd been. Contrary to Ikutsuki's expectations, though, the experiment had a different result. What? Don't tell me. Hmm. If a plume of dust was implanted into the body of a person who already had a personality, what would happen? A plume of dust stimulates the creation of an ego. So it's not out of the question that it would create a new personality in the same body. In other words, there wasn't split personalities in Sho's mind, but two completely different entities in the same body. The original Sho and the personality that was created when the Plume of Dusk was put inside him, that now calls itself just Minazuki. According to the records, after the operation, Minazuki entered a vegetative state after some time. Thus, Ikutsuki let go of Minazuki. He was then transported to a hospital in the suburbs of Inaba, and there are no records of Minazuki from there on. What happened from that point on, I can only speculate. But I wonder what sort of life Minazuki led after he regained consciousness. Mitsuru's expression softens. Even if Minaz Minazuki was created by Ikutsuki, this is just one last way of that Ikutsuki's ghost still haunts us. Ikutsuki's research only followed similar experiments created by the Kurijo group. If Sho's past is as Mitsuru describes, then he's yet another victim of the Kurijo group, not just an enemy to be defeated. Not long after we pass through the main entranceway, we see a path lane to the school's main gates, which are painted in a strange pattern. Beyond that, nothing but red fog. There's no telling what state the town is in right now. And she still looks depressed. Labra said that she wanted to speak with Minazuki. And now, so do I. We'd better rescue Yukiko's group and get back here then. Indeed. Let us accomplish our duties with haste. There's no point in denying that Kirijo is partly responsible for this series of cases. That truth won't change. And it's obvious that this is way, way, weighing heavily on Mitsuru's shoulders since she is the head of the Kirijo group now. That's why I believe I truly understand how Mitsuru felt when she made the choice to step back from the front lines earlier and trust in her comrades. That's how it should be. Our teammates are all reliable people who will follow our lead. Fuka, what's Yukiko's position? Um, I sent something southeast of there. Please be careful. As Fuka's communication cuts out, the school building behind us makes a growing sound. It's so loud now. I get the feeling that there isn't a lot of time left. 
But Zero and I nod to each other before we begin running towards town. I'm sure it's not over. Oh, it is over. What do you know? Well, that, that finished this one faster than I expected. Oh, wait. There's still at least... Well, rush to Juness. And then... The world of me. Well, I might as well finish off this portion down here, I guess. That'll be the last one for this, and then we can go on the big long one that finally finishes it. But like I said, I know I'm not finishing it in this part. We run at top speed through the fog enveloping the town of Inaba. Not a single soul can be found outside. Sight reminds me of nothing more than the dark alley. Akiko must feel the same way as he runs beside me. Oh, because we switched to Mitsuru. Mitsuru, how are Aigis and Teddy Teddy doing? They must have gotten out into the town by now. You're right. Let me search for them. I concentrate and search the area uh, for any readings. My search ability has only a limited range. To make matters worse, the images that appear in my mind have severe interference likely caused by the strange fog. This fog seems to be symbolic of Minazuki's solitude, as if it's trying to severe, sever our connections to one another. Mm. I found them in the town shopping district. We'll be able to catch up with them quickly. All right, let's hurry to join up with them. Then we can compare notes. Fortunately, Agus and Teddy appear to be very close by. We hurry towards the readings in an effort to meet up with the others. Here again. Ow! My back still hurts. Getting old sucks. Do you age, Teddy? I don't. Oh, by the way, there's something I've been meaning to ask you, Aichan. Is there anyone you like? Persona 3 protagonist. What do you mean? Come on, you can't fool me. If you don't have anyone, then you and me should... I guess. Teddy Teddy. M -m Michan! Aki! Akihiko-san, Mitsuru-san, thank goodness you're both safe. Oh, what happened? You're both beaten. I was careless. We were ambushed by an enemy and suffered severe damage. Though they're acting brave, it's always at a glance that both Teddy and Agus have been severely injured. It's clear that they won't be able to fight properly for a while. Is someone... Please respond... Please, John, I hear you! Talk to your lover bear! Is that you, Kujikawa? We can hear you. That voice! Mitsuru-san? Thank goodness! I heard you were captured! Yes, but we're fine now. I'm sorry to have worried you. Where are you right now? Yukiko-senpai and I went out to look for Kanji and the others. But the town's turned into a maze! I lost track of them while we were getting our bearings. We're thinking about heading back to Juness right now. Alright, keep going to Juness. We'll head over too, so we'll meet you there. Tatsumi and Shiragani should have arrived already. Understood. Please be careful. Alright, now that that's decided, we need to hurry. I guess, Teddy Teddy, can you go on? Leave it to me to guide you to Juness. I'll use my nose and... Teddy appears to have sent something. He turns and looks at a shape that appeared further down in the shopping district. After all that's happened, do they still intend to make us fight? No, from here on, they're doing this just to buy time. Shape ahead draws closer, and I see that it's a double of Satonaka. There's no need to wonder about whether if this is the real one or not. Ah, at least it happened right away. Everyone else inside and ran away. What happened to all that fun stuff? Oh, maybe they just don't need you anymore. I guess you're the runs of the litter. A fake Jiechan! Bears have packs, not litters, and we're not runts! It's fine, Teddy. Let it say whatever it wants. I stop Teddy as he tries to lash out in response to the fake Satunaka's harsh words. It's true that we made a mistake in being captured by the enemy before this started, but still. I've made some errors this time, but we have our comrades. Even if one of us was to fall, the rest of us can compliment each other. My standing here right now is a result of the trust we have for one another. I will carry out my duty, and you will be stopped. Oh, I guess I got my thumbnail. With my thoughts for my comrades who left for the top of the tower at the forefront of my mind, I grab hold of the hilt of my rapier. No matter what taunts these shadows have for me, my heart will not be shaken. My comrades leave me have my back. All I have to do is keep proceeding onward. I, 
No. We will protect this world. We will not lose to the likes of you. We're the most powerful lineup ever! We'll prove that we've got the upper claw here! Two of them are so hurt that I'm surprised they could even move. The fires in their eyes are stronger than ever. I sense their will to fight shining through. Ha! Huh. I'll accept that result for now. We'll take on this burden in their state. Steve. Next to me, Akiko slams his fist into the palm of his other hand and steps in front of Agus and Teddy. I was hoping for a chance to fight about now. I felt myself getting rusty. The rest of you can sit back and watch. This tournament is foolish, but I was given one of your insipid names. It's time I showed you the power of the Execution Queen. I guess I'll choose Akihiko to fight against Chie, even though I could completely decimate Chie with Mitsuru. Might as well have a bit of a fight and have some fun, I guess. You know, fun. Remember what fun's like? I don't know. I, I, it's... Final. Uh, it's just a remix of... <laughs> Why does he just appear out of nowhere? I, I didn't know he had some mysterious uh, powers to do that. Oh well, let's just punch her. Yeah, let's just punch her. With a gut, and where the hell else? Oh yeah? You missed me, Chie. You like missing? I'm just repeating moves. Can't grab her. And that sounds wrong, doesn't it? Wow. She's got some weird moves here, though. Get broke by Persona. Why do I only have two Personas anyway? Whatever. I guess it is. Toothless is Protein Junkie. I don't remember if I ever saw his name. Well, that ends this uh, one very soon. We just gotta get through the dialogue. We don't even turn back to look at the melted shadow anymore. We rely on pace those to run with all our speed through the red fog towards Junez. Yeah, you should have been doing this from this point on. Ew, green slime. There! Come on! Everyone hurry! We eventually see the large store that I had last been in when we ex exited the TV world. This building must normally be quite lively with customers, but now it looms with an eerie sun within the dim red fog. Our rendezvous point is on this building's rooftop. Everyone remain in contact while searching for Kujikawa and the rest. Stay alert. <laughs> Every day's great at your tuneness. Hello! Modder on the side of the road flickers and that Gerald Teddy suddenly appears on the screen. What the? You again, you phony bear! What do you want now? Thanks for coming all the way out to such a remote place. Did you enjoy the P1 climax? There were so many touching battles this time. But, too bad for you. Unfortunately, you've all served your purposes already. What do you mean by that? Just what I said. When you fought, you released fragments of your personas. And I've gathered more than enough of them. Thus, there's no reason to keep you persona users alive any longer. Prepare to be swallowed by a surge of shadows! Once Cheryl Teddy finishes, the monitor shuts off. Silence fills the area once again. What is the shaking? With the thundering roar, a vicious black liquid geysers up from everywhere. This black wave surrounds us, whirling madly, and begins to close in. Many shadows. They're going to attack. Please be careful. Cheeky bastards. Come, Persona. Akiko's Persona, Cesar, swings its sword towards the approaching black wave. The mass of shadows retreats for a moment, like we're seeing tight. Then immediately surges towards us like a tidal wave. Artemisia. Persona. Initiating summon sequence. Athena. They summon personas one after another and have no choice but to fight back. If things are this bad outside, I have to worry about Kuchikawa and the others who are on the rooftop. We must get inside as soon as possible to meet up with them. 
But the horde of shadows pour its forth without stopping, giving us no respite. Even the entrance to Janus has been completely covered with the black mass. If this becomes a drawn out battle, then obviously it will be at a disadvantage. I feel a sense of lightlessness. After being on that cross, I'm severely exhausted. Even Agus and Akihiko are moving less nimbly than usual. Teddy fights on as if trying to protect the three of us, but he is injured as well. He won't last forever. Ugh. If this keeps up. <laughs> Risa chan! Yuki chan! Nao chan! I'll be right there! More shadows incoming! They're not stopping! <sighs> Where was he hiding this many shadows? My vision begins to darken as if layers of gauze are being wrapped around my eyes, and I feel even more tired than ever. Though each shadow may be inconsequential in its own, their sheer numbers are too much to contend with. My arms drop to my side and I can't lift them anymore. Mitsuru! Hey, hang in there! Nichon! Watch out! Mitsuru-san! <sighs> Come on, can't you pull it together? I really don't want to get involved here, you know? Well, here's a dachi. What the? As the sound echoes out, my vision returns. I see a shape moving towards us, mowing down the horde of shouts. Was that just a persona attack? The shouts that had been overwhelming us retreat, and a path opens up towards the Juna's entrance. You are. Oh man, you guys look terrible. That's what you get for sticking your noses into places they don't belong. The newcomer is the man who speaks la languidly while scratching at the back of his neck. That persona attack must have come from him. He looks familiar. The serial number murder case that took place in Inaba last year. I try to remember the name of the former detective who had been arrested for a su as a suspect. Are you Toru Adachi? What? I thought Adachi was in police custody. Wow, I'm famous now. You're Mitsuru Kirijo, right? I guess the rest of these people are your subordinates. What the, what's Adachi baby doing here? Wait. You must be a fake, too! Huh? You too? A fake? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm a fake. Everything about his response radiates insincerity. He seems to be an intelligent but shrewd man. But, for right now, it doesn't matter if this man is a fake or not. Notice is why such a person would go out of his way to help us. Why did you save us? <laughs> it wasn't just for you. If you died here, it'd be trouble for me. I have to obey the rules. Rules. Never mind, I'm just rambling. Still, isn't this an impressive number of shadows? I bet you'd really be able to get up to something fun like, oh, say, summoning up a god or something. Summoning a god? Is that what that show guy is doing? So this horde of shadows seems to have been gathered here by the other Minazuki after all. It's attained to use them to awaken a godlike being. What he called his world is one where that being has descended. But what will result in the fall? Other destruction. I'm just guessing. And if this many shadows were to head over to that tower and start wrecking shit, that building wouldn't stand a chance, would it? Plus, anyone inside would be in for some real trouble, wouldn't they? Well, it's not like it matters to me. I'm gonna be on my way now. Good luck or whatever. Aren't the rest of your friends in here at Juness? You kids love crowding together, after all. Don't you think you'll win with those numbers? Hey, stop! Where do you think you're going? Don't, Teddy Teddy. I know you want to go after him, but we're all exhausted right now. We need to prioritize meeting up with your friends. Toro Adachi doesn't even look back at Teddy and begins walking at a leisurely place in the direction of Yasugami High. We quickly lose sight of him as he becomes lost in the muddy stream of shadows. Toru Adachi? At the very least, he didn't seem to be a fake made from a shadow. <laughs> Is he scheming something after all? No matter what his aims were, it's true that we were saved in the end. Save thinking about it for later. We need to hurry. We run along the path to Juness's ent Junez entrance that had been created for us by Adachi Strike and rush into the store up the stairs. The gushy shadows had entered the building as well, but they are far fewer in number than they had been outside, and aren't much of a hindrance. Eventually the stairs end up and we see end and we see a door that opens to the rooftop food court. Oh no! It's a repeated background! In the food court beyond a horde of shadows had regained its intensity and continued filling in one after another. 
4% of users from Inaba are fighting them. Even though they are experienced, fierce fighters and have survived many tough situations, it seems they are having a hard fight against the sheer volume of these shadows. Damn it! I'm getting more intense again! There's no end to this! You can't give up! Mitsura-san and her people should arrive soon! Right! We can't lose somewhere like this! Risei-chan, Nao-chan, Yuki-chan! I'm so glad you're all okay! I'm coming over right now! Oh, Teddy! And Mitsuru-san, too! Teddy should have been considerably exhausted and injured, but seeing the faces of his friends must have given him strength. He darts towards his friends as fast as his little legs can carry him, and joins the battle line. They are united by a strong bond as well. You can't fall behind either. Teddy! Hey! You intentionally left me out, didn't you? You're loud as always. You still have a lot of energy left. You don't go down easy, but I see you're barely hanging on. <laughs> Don't underestimate me. Half your stuffing's hanging out anyway, so you don't get to say anything. Sorry we're late. You did well in keeping him at bay. We'll join in the fight. What, did they use lasers? With a sense of relief at seeing everyone we had been unable to locate, we quickly tell them of our situation and check on their conditions. It's clear that all of them are tired and injured, but now that our numbers have doubled, we should be able to make up for that by cooperating with each other. As it turns out, we are slowly but surely able to push back the seemingly endless torrent of shadows. We can do this! There's enough of us here now that I'm sure we can win! It's too early to be relieved yet. The shadows all over town are converging on that tower. At this rate, our senpai in there will be... Shirogane is right. If we are held up here, we won't be able to aid those who have headed up the tower. If the shadows are gathering with the intent to climb that tower, then we have to take the chance of returning to the tower ourselves to intercept them. But considering the sheer number of shadows, that would be too dangerous. Mitsura-san, Ken-kun has given me the details. This case has many similarities with Shuji Yukutsuki's plan. I believe the culprit has the same intent. And considering the current situation with these hordes of shadows, the time is nigh. Shomi Nazuki, who called Shuji Yukutsuki his father and the words Toro Dachi left us with, we all have, we have all the circumstantial evidence. And this time Naoto speaks of is nothing less than the end of the world. Do we have no choice but to entrust this to the others here? Isn't there something we can do, Mitsuru-san? This isn't the time to argue, Mitsuru-san. We have to go. What's there to worry about, Mitsuru? There's only one option here. Everyone wants to return to the tower, completely disregarding their own safety. Not a single one of us is afraid to volunteer, even in this desperate situation. In addition, we've been forestalled again and again since this started. It seems that my position as leader of the Shadow Operatives has put me on the defensive without my noticing. We have to go on the offensive now that we have the strength to do so. Everyone, listen up. The Shadows are likely gathering at that tower. Their goal is likely to bring about the coming of a god with the power to destroy the world. We must stop this at all costs. You know, you should be surprised by now about this uh, plot. I mean, you have lived it. Fujikawa, will you lend me your strength? We'll combine our communication abilities to contact Yamagishi. They need to be told of the danger. The first step is to make contact. I task the other six with making sure that the area is secure, then take Kujikawa's hand. We both feel a familiar tension to think of what we feel in battle as we focus our thoughts and concentrate on the tower. Persona! Though the situation is truly chaotic and the end of the world is drawing near, the vision that appears in my mind is surprisingly clear. To think that Kujikawa's communication ability is this powerful, it's equal to Yamagishi's. I've also been told that it's evolved to the point that she can participate in combat now. These Persona users of Inaba have great potential hidden within them. That's right, we have the obligation to protect this town, their future. Um, Bukasan is... somewhere around the middle of the tower? Hold on, Fujikawa. There's something in the sky. There's a radio something approaching at high speed from the fog-filled sky. Eventually, the rhythmic sound of a helicopter reaches our ears. A large helicopter with Rijo group markings approaches us out of the fog. The pilot must be... Kikuno! That's you there, isn't it, Kikuno? Respond at once. Lady Mitsuru, thank goodness you're safe. What are you doing there? This airspace is dangerous. You must withdraw at once to a safer area. You're all putting your lives at stake by fighting. I refuse to shame myself by withdrawing. I can only smile at the way Kikuno refuses my direct order. She won't hesitate to risk herself for my sake. That's never changed at all. And there's something I must tell you at once. We've decoded more of the records from Shuji Ikutsuki that I gave to Labrasan. We've reached a point where there is a description that seems to be hinting at the security code. 
If we can solve it, we may be able to fully unlock it. The clues to the password are my true form that I should take and the one written of in the prophecy. Prophecy and true form? Could this be about what happened back then? Suru, I have to remember. That insanity Yakutsuki was a slave to. Remember the speech he gave us? I could never forget that night three years ago. That we were cast into the depths of our despair. Yakutsuki looked down on us with insanity in his eyes and told us of his own, own ambitions. He said he would become a king in the new world. With that in mind, what he strived to become, his self-professed true form. The new world that Shuji Kripsi strove for. The true form he want, that he wanted this world to assume. Everyone besides himself has been charged changed to a shadow. King of the Fall. There's no mistake. Those words symbolize the distorted ambitions that Kripsi had become obsessed with, and what he truly believed he would become. King of the Fall. That's it! The password was accepted, and the file's been unlocked. I'm opening the file now. There's no time to wait for an analysis. Kujikawa, let's try again. We need to get this information to Lazarus through Yamagishi. We direct our search in the direction of the tower once more and direct detect Yamagishi. Near her are a number of other readings that appear to be in, in combat. They are Narukami, Satanaka, and Hanamura. It seems they are fighting valiantly to protect Yamagishi. Though they had been injured, I, I sign relief, sensing that they've made a recovery. They really open circle communications with Yamagishi related our situations. According to Yamagishi, the sun of shadows in town have been pouring into the tower as well. We then pass on our own conclusion, the reason for the horde of shadows and our information on the password. Even Yamagishi seems lost for words at hearing this, but she quickly recovers herself. So that's why all these shadows have been flooding in. We'll stop them here as well. I'll tell Labyrinth about that password at once. Please be careful, Mitsuru-senpai. Everyone looks towards me once the communication ends. They're waiting for a word with, from me with such impatience. But don't worry, I understand. We will now head to the tower to aid those who are still in there. We'll have to force our way in. We will combine the strength of our personas and fight our way through. As they say, that's what I'm talking about. That was awkward. <laughs> this is starting to get interesting. I'm getting pumped up. All right. If that's the plan, then it's time to bust out all our skills. Better not fall behind, Ted. Roar! I'm getting fired up! Wait for us, Sensei! Wait for me, Labby-chan! There's no need to fear with my tremendous strength! Right! Labrys and Chia are fighting too, so I can't just stay here. While we were about to slip towards the tower, I noticed the black silhouette in the vehicle lowering its altitude close enough to graze the horde of shadows. Kikuno! You need to leave Inaba and stand by until we contact you again. No, my lady. This helicopter is loaded with two 7.62mm Gatling guns, 19 continuous rounds of 70mm rocket ammunition, as well as a 30mm chain gun. Though these cannot damage shadows, they will be useful in preventing their advancement and providing you with some measure of backup. Don't be ridiculous. It's too dangerous. Your Labrisan asked me why someone who couldn't use a persona would risk their life to go to a place where shadows appear. <laughs> No matter how slight it may be, I can still provide some assistance to you all. I have been prepared to risk my life from the start. My lady, I have my own battles to fight. Hikano san. Mitsuru, I'm gonna repeat the same mistake. You're right. It doesn't matter how strong or weak you are. I pushed Narukami and his friends away before, and now I'm doing the same to Hikuno. Hikuno, I accept your determination. Aid us from the helicopter. We must reach that tower at all costs. Understood. I will see you there safely, even if it costs me my life. Let us depart. Kikido's helicopter rotates in place to face the direction we will be proceeding in. With a tremendous concussion, a rain of bullets showers down on the mass of shouts, flashing bits of blackness every which way. The wave that had been completely covering the road loses its intensity and begins to retreat. Now! Right! All right! Come! Persona! Go! Persona! Here goes! A lot of sparkling light runs into the wave of shouts, accompanied by a roaring sound. We can do this. We nod to each other and leap, one after another, into the newly opened path. 
We must head to that tower where our comrades are fighting so that I can carry out... No, so we can all carry out our duties. That should be a to be continued. Yep. And now, let's get to Labrys' story here. I have a feeling this is going to be Labrys' story. I mean, there is no real protagonist for the Persona 3 crew anyway. She's sort of filling the void. The world of me. The world of me. Five of us who had been entrusted with pursuing Shokun are proceeding towards the top of the tower. How many floors have we climbed already? Store hallways and classes appear at every turn, and there is no sign of us reaching the end. The quakes are growing more and more frequent. I guess this means the time is running out? You know, that Minazuki guy talked about making his world. But how is he going to do that? If we presume he's following in Akutsuki's footsteps, then he's going to gather shadows, merge them, and summon some great power. You mean that thing the Nazuki-kun was talking about? What do you think, Junpei? I mean, you've been surprisingly quiet. Are you not feeling well? Huh? Nah, I'm fine. Coaches are well-trained, you know. I guess it's just that I'm feeling all tense. All this end-of-the-world stuff isn't anything to joke about. I've got people waiting for me. Like the kids have a game coming up next week, so there's no way I can lose here. Stupe's being serious for once. Looks like he's grown up a bit. I guess I should learn from his example. <laughs> Junpei has leveled up. You don't want the world to end either, do you, Labby-chan? You just woke up after all. Yeah. I don't want to lose this world after I've met everyone. I gotta do my best. Here it goes again. Wait, didn't we see this classroom earlier? I feel like the fog's getting thicker too. It won't be good if this keeps up. Since we can't get a communication with Fukasan, we don't even know what's around us. No matter how far we go, the maze of the fake Yasogami High just keeps going and going. The visible inside is getting worse as well, and we even have trouble seeing the floor at our feet. We're starting to get flustered because we've had no sense of progress after all this time. Come on, keep your cool. Getting all aggravated won't do us any good. You're so positive as always, Junpei-san. You think so? I think you've changed, though. You've gotten taller, too. Huh? <coughs> Uh, why do you sound so relieved? Um, I've been wondering if I hadn't changed at all. I made a promise to Mitsuru-san that I'd live life like a child. What's that supposed to mean? Is that hard to do or something? It's difficult. I don't know what it's like to be a child, so I wasn't sure if I should keep doing what I've been doing. Huh. I guess being an adolescent boy is difficult. You should just live your life the way you are. I mean, <laughs> you are a kid. That's right. You can't trust Mitsuru-senpai's idea of childhood. Can you even imagine what she was like when she was a kid? Whoa, you're right. I can't. It's impossible for common people like us. Speaking of children, that show dude is the perfect example of a spoiled brat. One moment he's joking around, and the next he's incredibly pissed off. Yeah. What would someone have to go through in order to make them seriously consider destroying the world? What happened to him? When the topic shifted to Shokun, Koromaru-san passes us by and stops before one of the doors. What's up, Koromaru-san? Is there something bothering you about this classroom? When I approach the door that Koromaru-san is barking at, I see stairs leading up the stairway inside the classroom. I'm sure that I wasn't the only one who was hoping that this was the place. Jupiter-san quickly opens the door and we step inside. Aside from the staircase, the room seems like a normal classroom used to, oh my god, they're repeating each other's stuff now. That's the line of the rows of blackboard down, yeah, yeah, oh my god, it's the exact same description. We get it. I have my own yearning to live a life including this place, including places like this. It's not fun, Labyrinth, give up. Even at a time like this, I smirk a bit at myself and just as I'm about to follow everyone into the stairway. Ah, looks like you've made it all the way here. Now, what to do? Oh my god! It's Gerald Teddy in person, in the flesh, in the shadow. You're General Teddy! We finally found you! General Teddy, the mastermind of this tournament. With his cape and a fearless grin, General Teddy is completely different from the real Teddy we encountered earlier. Even though the screen he has an ominous air about him, I check him with my senses just to be sure, and sure enough, he's a shadow. No, this isn't a normal shadow reading. Wonder World is this? 
This is getting out of hand. So I, General Teddy, will face you myself. Now bring on the ring! Well, General Teddy, oh my god, stop it, we get it! Teddy ran through the area, pushes away, the feeling at the moment goes, something's wrong. And eight kids have to change my way of thinking and prepare for battle. Now, it's time to have some fun. Those who hinder the creation of my world shall all perish here. Whoa, someone's got a big mouth. My world? <laughs> this has been our world from the start. We're not just going to let you destroy it that easily. Destroy? <laughs> I will not destroy it. This will be a new beginning. The beginning of a world of my own, where only I will live. Only you? What about Sho? This doesn't concern you. The vessel will soon be complete. Nothing, Nothing you, you can, can do, do at this point serves any purpose. We won't know that unless we try. Konamaru! Like hell we're gonna let you start anything like that! Let's take this guy down and move on! Uh, Labrys. Yep, I'm going for the cheap shot. Just Labrys right now. Why not Labrys versus Teddy anyway? Keep looking Teddy there. But this one's not a normal shadow. Oh well, let's just keep this thing up. Should be a cinch. Teddy's not that fast or anything. You broke my persona there, you fool. Oh, see, that's cheating. With Labrys. Aha! Uh -huh. See what I did to your persona? Yes, seriously. There you go. Wasn't that hard. So, who would have talked if I had to chose Yukari? Who knows? <laughs> no matter. That was the limit of this temporary body. I've bought enough time. Huh? You're not gonna melt now? Sorry, I had to yawn. Persona 4 Arena does that to me. As Jippy san noticed the, noticed, the big sweet defeat up until now have lost their shapes quickly after being defeated and melt into a black ooze before disappearing completely. But this Gerald Tay is just as confident as he was before the battle and has the same smile. I knew it. You're different from the other fakes. Who are you? Who am I? I'm General Teddy. Who else? Well then, bye-bye, you pesky vermin. <laughs> hey, get back here! Gerald Teddy's world escape about him with a laugh and disappears, vanishing into thin air without trace. Uh, hey, Yucatan. He said something about a vessel being completed. Wasn't that kind of suspicious? Yeah, it must mean that we don't have any time left. And when we defeated that General Teddy, he didn't disintegrate like the other fakes. There must be more to this case. Kenkun is right. Gerald Teddy is different from the fakes that we've been running into up until now. Plus, those words he said before fighting. Minazuki said that he'd make his world, and Shokun talked about my world. And yet Gerald Teddy said... Said roar? <gasps> the quake starts again. The blackboard and the podium rattle loudly, and some of the decorations on the walls fall down. The building shakes strongly, and for a long time, as if asserting that the time is drawing near. Can you all hear me? You're very close. I'm getting a strong reading just up those stairs. When we hear Fukasan static in communication, we feel a sense of tension fill us. We we steal ourselves and make our way up the stairs here in the classroom. And we will go up to the top. Or to a door. At the end of this long, straight set of stairs, we find a door. When we open the heavy, cold door, we see... 
Surprise! It's a birthday party! Oh, that's a familiar scene. The hazy moon immediately grabs our attention. It seems much closer than we had seen it, in a, seen it while wandering the town. And then, there are the countless crosses. They're the same as the ones with suicide the others had been bound to. These crosses are scattered around the ovoid area we find ourselves in. No way! Is this place... It, is this the moon viewing tower from GeckoCon High? It seems this place is truly outside, and a strong wind blows at us. This must be a landing jutting out from the side of the tower. I see a number of oddly shaped objects around. From one of those places, I see a black shape flying towards us. When I land, I see Shominazuki. That's right. It's where you killed Ikutsuki. This time, it'll be the place where you all die. Well, technically, it was Mitsuru's father who might have done the killing or something, because he had a gunshot wound and then fell to his death. Wasn't that it? See, I've already written what's going on in your tombstones. It's some real poetical literature. Just kidding. Shokun, please stop this. Even if you do do it, it'll change nothing. Is this all because you hate us? Because we stopped Akutsuki? You really don't ever shut up, do you? I already told you that I don't give a shit about some dead guy. I'm doing this because it's fun. Watching you all freak out is hilarious. You're nothing but goddamn pests that can't do anything on your own. So I can't stand you buzzing around. That's when he spoke to me and said, you should just destroy the world. <laughs> Isn't that the greatest suggestion ever? Let's stop this. You keep saying Ikutsuki doesn't matter to you, but he's all you've been talking about this whole time. What was that, bitch? Uh, Ikutsuki was a worthless ass who did whatever he wanted to me and still ended up dead. That's all. I don't give two shits about someone like him. That's not true, Shokun. You're only running from your problems. You shouldn't turn away from your true self. Shokun, come back with us. None of us hold any of this against you. Didn't you see what happened before? I'm a machine and I hurt everyone, but they still accept me. You're just like me. If you have somewhere you can go back to, then you don't have to do this. You're not me. Oh, wait, that's wrong. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut the hell up, goddammit. <laughs> you have Tourette's or something? His flustered red suddenly breaks off. The X-shaped scar behind his red bangs is glowing a dull reddish white. I already know what this means. That's enough. How far must you go in attempting to ruin this plan? You... you're Minazuki, huh? Unfortunately, the borrowed power has been exhausted. From here on, I have to deal with you myself. An emotionless isolated glare pierces us. Minazuki, the one who awakened with Shokin and to uh, use his own words, the one who grants his wishes. It, it's him again! Are we really sure that he doesn't have split personalities? I concentrate carefully on his presence. This isn't a, just a new fuss, facet of the same person. This is a completely different presence than before. The reaction from my fluid dust is even stronger than before. I can tell clearly now. Shokin has a fluid dust within his body. Minazuki, what I said goes for you too. You're the same as me. What you are is the plume of dust itself. <laughs> That's right. Ikutsuki had a plume of dust implanted in this boy during his experiments, resulting in my birth. I knew it. However, I still have no love for that man. After all, you tried to have me erased. Erase you? Yes. Ikutsuki was nothing more than a threat. Who was using this boy only to throw him away later. But this boy was something different. He suggested that we try to act exactly like Ikutsuki. He created fake Ikutsukis. He even went so far as to gain access to the Kirijo servers to try to gain more information about Ikutsuki. How many times may I hear that name? Ikutsuki, 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 Ikutsuki. Then, you were the hacker Kikuno-san told us about. But Ikutsuki. The only other person this boy knew had already died by the time the boy awoke from his coma. All that was left to him was the truth. That man had tossed him aside like a piece of trash. Good thing, too. We would have heard nothing but endless bad puns. Seriously? Since then, the boy did everything on his own. He had no help, met rejection at every turn. There was nowhere to go, and no one to turn to. You all believe that everyone is surrounded by other people just like you. But that in itself is only the beginning of this world's failure.
Maybe I'm surrounded by nobody. I just relish in the fakeness of all of this. The world holds no worth for this boy. Sho Minazuki was thrown into this world all alone, and he wished that everything besides himself would disappear. Then all I must do is grant him that wish. Maybe it's ironic for someone like me to say this, but Minazuki Kun's voice sounds like a machine, completely emotionless. Perhaps even though he was personality created by the Blue of Dusk, he may have been trying to save Shokun in his own way. But even if that was the case... No, that's not what Shokun really wishes for. What you're doing won't save him. Even if you don't know how, or if you end up hurting others, human interaction can change people. Labrys. Silence, puppet. What would a thing like you know of this boy? That's right, I ain't human. But neither are you. You're just using his body while you try to destroy the world. You don't care what he feels at all. I ain't like you. No matter how much it hurts, or how much suffering it causes, I love this world. Don't lo worry, Labrys. You'll soon come to hate it like everyone else. Oh, maybe this should be my ah, well thumbnail. Said. Great job, Labrys. That is... That's not weird for Jim Bay. But yeah, so many, so many thumbnail choices in this part, man. How am I going to choose one? Right. What he's saying just sounds like he's running from his problems. It doesn't matter if you're fully human or not. We're all standing here because of how we clashed with others and gained acceptance. Very well. There is nothing more to uh, You have gone go too far. Sometimes. Sit in shame of your own ignorance as you await the moment of your destruction. Uh... I have a feeling this is uh, going to lead to a battle, so this is where I'm going to end the part. If there's any other dialogue, we'll see. If not, it's going to fade out, and I'm, I'm going to stop recording for today, and next time we'll try to finish this story. How about that? So we're probably going to be fighting Sho or Minazuki or whatever the hell. Apparently, he just split his name, his first and last name, or his last and first name into two, and assigned it to one of his personality things. Anyways, let's finish the dialogue, and so long. Oh, it's okay. Well, we're not done yet. Yeah, we're getting there. I thought it, I could skip it. Ms. Minazuki can slowly draw us his two swords. While he stares at us with unblinking murderous intent, we saw behind him also readies for battle. I will save Shogun. Here we are. And to do that, we'll defeat you. Anyways, so long. Uh, well, we'll go with Labrys for this battle. And I reiterate for the third time, so long.